Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Good evening, RCF family. Thank you for joining us for this time to study through the Word. Amen. I'm here with our beloved Pastor Walter, and we are looking forward to diving into the Word tonight. Yes. Uh, you know, it's interesting because this document was such a difficult document to work with today. If anything can go wrong to try and test your character, this was one of those days. Uh, interesting enough, we're going to be sharing on walking in the Spirit today. So uh, when you talk about walking in the Spirit, you're really talking about the characteristics of the inward man. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, we are born again. And through the born again experience, uh, our spirit was renewed, given the nature of God. And so the scriptures call it the inward man, the new man, uh, the hidden man of the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so this new life uh, 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 for anyone that, that is in Christ, uh, they are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things become new; uh, old things have passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, so this new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, so again, so when we, when we are referring to the characteristics of the inward man, we are addressing the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and it's important for us to understand that walking in the Spirit produces fruit. Uh, so let's, uh, let me kind of dig into this. Galatians chapter 5, you want to read that? Mm -hmm. And I think you want to take it f uh, 16 and 17, if you wouldn't mind, please. So Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 says, But for this I say, then, the, um, this I say, then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, that these are contrary one to another. So you cannot do the things that you would. Uh, that was 16 and 17. Yes, okay. So, first off, uh, walking in the Spirit is in reference to conducting our lives through the dictates of our newly created Spirit, or the new man. It's a life controlled by the new man uh, that is in possession of the very nature of God. In other words, as we said earlier, when you're born again, you receive a new nature. Uh, you're born of the Spirit. Um, and so what a lot of people do is they mistake this, this uh, uh, walking in the Spirit in reference to walking in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if you search the Scriptures, you really can't find that terminology of walking in the Spirit other than in this passage of Scripture. Mm -hmm. So then it takes us down to the concept of context uh, to determine what is being said here. Now, uh, one of the first things we want to understand is that when there is no Greek word for uh, uh, that signifies the difference between the Spirit of Man and the Holy Spirit. It's usually a accumulation of like the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. or uh, the, uh, the new man, the new creation, new creation in Christ, uh, and, and so on. So, um, uh, so that's important. Um, uh, also, note that verse sixteen presents a choice, uh, meaning that uh, it is not uh, walking in the Holy Spirit that struggles with the flesh. So the, the idea is the Holy Ghost doesn't struggle with the flesh. Right. There's a conflict though, mm -hmm. which, we, which we realize that there's a conflict. Uh, it's, uh, it's the walk or the conduct of the human spirit that struggles mm -hmm. at times uh, with the flesh. Mm -hmm. So it, our inward man um, is constantly fighting back and forth uh, with the dictates of the flesh, trying to get the believer to abandon his spiritual life mm -hmm. so that he can live a very natural uh, and uh, natural life, a very sinful life. Uh, let me put it to you like this, a life without God. Yeah. Um, 
And I guess that would be one of the better ways to view it, although the others will fall into, into that as well. Uh, so again, notice that verse 16 presents a choice. Uh, so because of that, we understand that he's not talking about, the scripture is not talking about uh, using the term walking in the spirit as if the Holy Ghost is struggling with the flesh. Right, right. Um, uh, but our, our spirit, the spirit of man, does have that pull from the flesh, the lust of the flesh, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Galatians 5.17 reveals that there, are, that there is a conflict between the flesh, that is the sin nature, and the spirit of man. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's read verse 17 again. It says, For the, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, the idea is the the... the Flesh is lusting against the spirit of man, and the outcome is you can't do what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. If you're walking in, yeah. If you're walking in the flesh, mm -hmm. or if you're yielding, yielding to, it. to the flesh, and yeah. that's that's where the struggle is. Is mm -hmm. that you're either going to yield to the Word of God, to the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. uh, or you're going to yield to your spirit that has got that has been in. in has received a new nature. Right. So when you yield to your spirit that's received the new nature, you begin to produce the fruit of the spirit. That's good. Um, God is good. Um, if the believer gives in or yields to the sin nature uh, or the natural man, which means he decides to uh, process everything through his emotions and human desires, uh, spiritually speaking, uh, their spirit will not be able to do the things they would like to do, mm -hmm. which I think verse 17 bore that out for us. Yeah. Uh, if the believer chooses to yield to the inward life uh, of the Holy Ghost, that is the life of the spirit that is in us, uh, they will produce what is called the fruit of the spirit, as we've mentioned in few words already. Mm -hmm. um, Galatians 5 uh, 22 and 23. Can you read that, please? It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, uh, temperance. Against such there is no law. Notice that all the fruit of the Spirit are character traits that must be produced out of the life of the believer. Mm -hmm. So they're all character traits. Um, uh, the concept of the fruit of the, of the the concept of fruit is that out of the life of the or the vine. Let me say that again. The concept of fruit is that out of the life or the vine or the trunk of a tree flows through the uh, through the branches. So the very life of the vine, the very life that's in the the, the trunk of the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, that will flow to the branches. And then the branches produce fruit from the life of that tree flowing through them, mm -hmm. um, or flowing through the tree. It's just, and so this is allegorically speaking of the, of the believer's spiritual life. Right. Using a tree to kind of, or a vine, yeah. a grape vine, mm -hmm. uh, to show us that, uh, that the very life of, of God is flowing through God into us, depicting us as the branches. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, God is God is really good. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, Jesus said it like this. Can you turn to John fifteen, verses four through six? Jesus said, Abide in me. This is John 15, verse 4. It says, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5 says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. 
And verse 6 says, If man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them in the fire, and they are burned. So that branch never fulfills its purpose. Right. Right. Now, we know that this is, is set um, it, in the concept of, of producing fruit in prayer. In prayer life, yeah. But it, this is still a universal truth. Right. Uh, if you, uh, from an allegorical standpoint, you have an orange tree in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, it will produce oranges. Right. But it will produce oranges in the branches. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the branches will produce the oranges because of the life, of the very life of the tree that is flowing through the vine or mm -hmm. through its trunk or through its vine or whatever. Uh, I hope I said that correctly. Um, and that's important. So it's universal. You, you will always use this like this. Uh, I'm sorry, that kind of tossed me, mm -hmm. threw me off a little sorry. bit. Um, uh, again, if, uh, if you have a, tr a tree and it's an orange tree, you will be able to tell it's an orange tree because of the fruit it produces. Right. You'll be able to tell a Christian is a Christian because of the fruit mm -hmm. it produces. Right. Uh, but if the branches do not produce fruit, mm -hmm. then the branches are cut off. And that's just typical. Right. That's typical. If you go and, uh, and you have a tree that's not producing, Gosh. after a while, you're cutting off those... Um, you're cutting off those uh, uh, <laughs> those branches mm -hmm. so that they can produce fruit. Uh, why don't, uh, let me. Why don't you read? Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, even though the life of the vine is flowing into the branches, it's uh, it's the branches that are bearing the fruit. Uh, Jesus said it like this in the Amplified Bible. Can you pick up there in verse four? It should be right under your, right under your notes already. Or do you? Ha are you looking at? I the don't notes? have the notes. Oh. John fifteen. I, I can go ahead and read it. It says, uh, "Dwell in me, and I will dwell in you. Live in me, and I will live in you. Just as no branches can bear." fruit of itself without abiding and being vitally united to the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. That is such a powerful truth, isn't mm -hmm. it? So he's giving credit for the, to the vine to produce the fruit. Mm -hmm. He is not saying he's producing the fruit, but he's the, the very source of the life that is flowing through the vine. But yet, the branches are still up to them to bear fruit. If they do not bear fruit, they're cut off mm -hmm. and they're thrown into the fire. That doesn't sound like the Holy Ghost is bearing this fruit. Right. It's really left to the believer. It's left up to the believer to mm -hmm. bear fruit in their, in their lives. Um, uh, again, in verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him hears much or bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is, cut off from the vital union with me, you can do nothing. That is just so clear mm -hmm. to me yeah. uh, that the branches have the responsibility to bear the fruit. That's right. Um, the fruit of the newly created man is uh, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, uh, faith. Uh, but it really should be translated faithfulness because it'll make it a character trait. A character trait. Mm -hmm. uh, meekness and temperance. So let's start off, uh, uh, or let's start out with looking a little bit at this word love, which is agape, the very mm -hmm. love and nature of God mm -hmm. that has been deposited in us. Uh, uh, when the believer yields to the love of God or any of these character traits, 
they begin to bear the fruit in their new nature. They begin to bear the fruit of their new nature. For example, even though the love of God has already been uh, poured into them, they must still bear it out. So can you read Romans 5, 5, please? Mm -hmm. I got it right here. It says, and, and I'm not reading the whole verse. I'm just going to read a section of it. It says, uh, I think if you were going to do it technically, it would be section B. It says, for the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Mm -hmm. So we have this love in us. We have these character traits in us, but they need to be bore out mm -hmm. by us. In other words, we need to start practicing yielding to this fruit yeah. when the pressure is on. <laughs> it's good. It's important for us to understand that uh, uh, it, it lies within us. We have to choose to yield to love in order to bear it out or to produce the fruit of love in our lives. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about fruit is everybody can see it. Yeah. So it's not something that can't be seen. Right. So when it comes to the to the, the spiritual life of the believer, uh, we got to understand that miracle signs and wonders is not the only thing being produced out of our lives. Right. Uh, Find, prosperity is not the only thing that has been promised to us. Mm -hmm. There's these character traits That's right. that, uh, uh, that are to be flowing out of our lives mm -hmm. uh, because they make there, there's a clear distinction that we belong to Jesus yeah. and that we are born again. Um, and l read, let's go to John, 1 John. Um, Go to 1 John 3, verses 14 and 15, and I'll show you a little bit of what I mean. It says in 1 John 3, verse 14, it says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love, love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Uh, verse 15, mm -hmm. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, when did we receive eternal life? When we passed from death to life. Yes, when we were born again. Mm -hmm. we, we made that transition right. from the old nature mm -hmm. that was doomed by death right. to the new nature mm -hmm. that is recreated, uh, yeah. recreated Christ Jesus, and, and now has eternal life dwelling in Him mm -hmm. because of the presence of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But then it makes this distinction. Right. And, and the idea is that if you hate your brother, there's no eternal life in you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, can you read that again? Just so we it can says, we know we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So... Uh, John, the Apostle John, is saying, uh, people are going to know that you have eternal life or you've been born again because you love the brethren. Right. That's the earmark. That's the fruit mm -hmm. that is being looked for. Right. Uh, and so that's how a Christian is, is uh, distinguished from every, any other uh, uh, species yeah. uh, on earth or in the universe, yeah. or however you want to say it. Uh, for instance, there's a, the people that don't believe in God. Right. Uh, they don't have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they can't be expected to walk in the love of God. Right. So there's going to be character flaws in mm -hmm. them. Right. Uh, they might be more selfish. They might be more controlling. Mm -hmm. uh, but for a believer that has eternal life in them, and th they 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 are distinguished by their ability to love yeah. uh, their brothers. That's right. Brothers and sisters and so That's on. Right. Uh, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, let's read um, John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Um, it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, 
that ye also love one another. Verse 35 says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. My goodness. Mm. Let's read it one more time. Verse 34, it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. So, this first word in the fruit of the Spirit, this first characteristic, character right. trait uh, is love. Is love, yeah. And that is so vital and so important mm -hmm. because if this is not a fruit that's being bore out of your spirit or being seen in your life mm -hmm. towards your brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, then people will go, you're not really a Christian. Right. Or you're not his disciple. Yeah. Why? Because it's this love that makes that distinction yeah. that you belong to Christ. That's good. Uh, that is so important. The fruit of the born again spirit is is uh, is the outward proof that one is walking in the spirit, and as if and as if uh, far as fruit goes, it must be seen to determine what kind of fruit it is. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what's the next one in that list? Do you remember? Is that uh, it's a joy? Let me go to Galatians. Yeah, Galatians chapter 5, is it verse 22? Love and joy, peace, long-suffering. Love, joy, and peace. Uh, in f let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, B -b -b James chapter 1 real quick. James chapter 1. I'll let you do that. And read 2 and 3. Because patience is in there too, and I'm not sure if that's one of the ones in here. Mm -hmm. Yep, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now notice that it is up to the believer to count it all joy. That's right. It's not the Holy Ghost responsibility. Right. Even though uh, Romans uh, tells us that... Uh, uh, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, righteousness peace, peace, and enjoy. joy in the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost. Yeah. We still have to bear this fruit out. Yeah. That's good. To make that distinction. If you really want to live in true prosperity, mm -hmm. you do have to have these, uh, these uh, characteristics that right. become convictions in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, these inward convictions mm -hmm. uh, of love, yeah. joy, Peace, right. patience, all these things that are in you must be bore out of you and mm -hmm. seen by everybody to determine, to determine um, uh, uh, that you are, how can I say this, these are the qualities that distinguish mm -hmm. you uh, from a born-again believer right. to a person who's not saved. Yeah. Uh, these are just so important. Yeah. I, I want to stress one more time that it's not enough to walk in miracles. Mm -hmm. It's right. not enough uh, to be prosperous. Yeah. Uh, all of that is part of the spirit life of the believer. Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the very life, the spiritual life, the things that your spirit can produce through obedience in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, obeying the word, following the leadings of the Holy Ghost, Right. Uh, all of this prosperity, all of this uh, health, healing, all these things that are promised to you, there's more to this spiritual life than just that. Right. And I think sometimes, uh, as charismatic believers, we get stuck on this concept of miracles, signs, and wonders, which is all well, and I'm not trying to diminish it, because we definitely need miracles, mm -hmm. and we definitely need healing, but I, I want to point out the fact that there's more yeah. to the spirit life right. that is to be produced out of the Christian's life. Mm -hmm. uh, God is good, yeah. isn't he? I like uh, how you said in John 15, how you pointed out that this is the eternal life. Yes. And like, so to have those things, to have a ministry of you know, miracles, signs and wonders, or to, to prosper and have a tremendous amount of wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does that do if you're miserable? Right. What does that do if you don't, if you don't have, you know, if, if your relationships are in shambles because you can't walk in love? 
Yes. If you if you're if the pressure that hits you is is so great of a weight that you can't go through life with joy. Like and when you look at, at the peace. opposite of these characteristics, when you're not walking in love, mm -hmm. you know, then you're destroying relationships around you. And, and mm -hmm. like you said, what is the point of having all well, the you're blessing? Not, you're not happy. If you're and not so having the life flow. therefore you're not flow. totally prosperous. Yeah, that's right. Uh, with your relationships broken up and right. damaged and, and all this. And uh, I, I think it's Second Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith, lay a hold of eternal life, whereunto also you are called, having professed a good profession before many witnesses. Notice how it says, lay a hold of eternal mm -hmm. life. That's good. We have it, but we, it is up to us to hold on and to secure it That's in good. our lives. Uh, that part, of that is, mm -hmm. part of that is letting love flow yeah. so that everyone can see as a fruit mm -hmm. that we are walking in the spirit. In other That's words, good. we are walking under the dictates of the mm -hmm. human, uh, of the human spirit, or I, I think a better way to say it, of the recreated spirit. Yeah, that's good. Who is born again. That's good. Um, uh, 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 so there's joy there. Yeah. My brethren, count it all joy. That mm -hmm. becomes our response. Let's go to Galatians. When what is it? No. Colossians 3.16, I believe it is. Uh, and I apologize, I don't have these scriptures written down, so I'm just going from uh, memory, and the Lord's been so merciful and gracious to us. Um, as, as always, um, Colossians 3, I believe it's 3.16. Is that let the word of Christ dwell on you richly? Yes. Verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your heart. There you go. To the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonish, uh, admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Can you read that out of the Amplified? Do you yep. have it there? Mm -hmm. We just have to do the Amplified Classic since they've changed it up on us. Okay. Uh, verse 16 or 15 verse 15 15 says and let the peace the soul harmony which comes from Christ rule act as an umpire continually in your hearts deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ one body you were also called to live notice what it says it says let mm -hmm. yeah that's that's such a small word but has such a powerful impact. Amen. Because the idea is, is is you have to let. That's right. If you don't let, then the peace of God won't rule in your heart. That's right. The peace of God won't rule as an umpire in your heart. That's right. Uh, making these type of decisions, uh, the, we need the peace of God. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be able to bear peace out. Yeah. So whenever things get challenging for us, uh, like today was just, if anything could go wrong, it was going wrong. I mean, from the time I woke up in the morning uh, till, until, until I got here, it was going, things, I, I went to the grocery store and uh, the guy was, you know, I, was started, I was starting to leave and the guy forgot to put certain things in, my, in the bag, you know, and I go, oh. And I'm thinking to myself, thank God I'm saved. And I said <laughs> this to myself. I said, I said this to myself. If you trust God, you will not be overwhelmed. That's good. If you really trust God. Mm -hmm. So I smiled at the guy. He smiled back. Oops. <laughs> Put my stuff in the cart. Because I've been to this store before and... You know, when you get home and they don't put everything in your in your thing, then you have to go back. Go back, yep. And and that's just such a uh, waste of time. A waste of time, <laughs> inconvenience. Anyways, and then I lost these documents. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find them. Right. And and it wasn't until we got here, Debbie figured it out at the last minute. Yep. So I didn't have any time to to research these or to go over these notes. Mm -hmm. um, God is so good. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to cover some of these other terms later. Mm -hmm. But just to give you, uh, and to give all of you uh, watching on um, on uh, uh, live stream, 
the gist of what uh, of what we've been working on. This is going to be part of the Spirit Life mm. series. Uh, I might not teach it on Sunday morning because we've we've taught it here, but this is something that's just been weighing really heavy on my heart with all the different little things coming at people, uh, and just believing to keep myself at a place of constant peace mm -hmm. and and uh, and uh, all the attacks are, uh, uh, on, on people all around, on the finances and everything else, mm -hmm. um, uh, God is so good. Yeah. And so, if anything, if you're going through a hard time today, work on yielding to this fruit of the Spirit. Make sure that these these character traits are being bore out of you because that's how people will know who you are Amen. they will know that you are that you belong to Christ and that you have Christ's divine assistance and help uh, because of the way you act mm -hmm. it is Amen. your character that uh, the world is looking at to distinguish whether or not you're born again mm. or not that's good. Uh, now you may be uh, born again and you may be having a hard time and giving into your flesh occasionally um, uh, but you'll gain a bad reputation if you do that forever <laughs> you know and so people and people won't take you seriously so do your best uh, start today to allow the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. to be birthed out of you or bore out of you I guess is a better way to say it it's already in you because of the life of God right um, but it must be bore out of you. Mm -hmm. uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, may you prosper. Uh, and may all your endeavors be without struggle. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.